אנחנו נצליח. י"ג עמוד א', קידושין, 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 י"ג עמוד א', for those of you who are interested, we have an attached chart. Today's עמוד, we're in the middle of the very interesting סוגיה that discusses a case in which a woman got money, originally the money was not good קידושין, and later on she agreed to the קידושין. As we said, we're discussing a case of, let's see the cases, let's revise the cases which we've seen till now. The Sugi deals with four different cases. Two of them we've discussed and two of them we will. Let's see, case number one, I'm talking about Balpe, or we can be helped with a chart actually. And the case was, case number one, a girl got a, an item which was not Shove Pruta, It was actually a very cheap kind of rug, kind of mat. And when she received it, yeah, everybody, herself included, the Rosh says, I saw yesterday many more Mephoshim, Baruch Hashem, the Rosh says that she told the guy, it's not Shavu Pruta. Yeah, she knew it. Later on, ah, oh, what a surprise, what a cool guy, such a sticky guy. What did he put inside the mat? Psh, nice money, right? For Zuzim. And then she saw it. And her reaction was silence. Silence is gold. She did not say anything. She did not throw it back in his face, but she did not say anything at all. So now, says Rove, and this is important to know, although the rule usually is, as you guys said yesterday, silence means a consent or some other, other fancy word you were using. Silence, silence is consent. That's not always true. First of all, we saw in Dov Metziah Daf Vov Omud Aleph, I remembered vaguely and I checked it today. Sometimes silence doesn't mean that you agree. You have other reasons to keep quiet, like you think the other person says complete nonsense, or you have other reasons. I'm not going down there now. Rov says over here that although once she saw the big money, she kept silent and she did not throw the money back, one would argue and say, well, now she accepted it. Didn't the trick work? What a nice uh, sticky marriage. The answer is no, says Rova, because at the beginning she received the whole thing as what? As a non-Kiddushin. So her mind, her mindset is now set on what? This is one big joke. This is nothing, right? I later on, what did she do? She didn't say yes. She didn't say no. It's true she didn't say no. It does mean that she wants a Kiddushin. She's remaining the same way as she was before. Beforehand, her mind was... This is not Kiddushin, it's one big stupidity, and therefore I'll remain silent the same way. That's what Rava holds. If she says yes, obviously it's a yes. If she says no, or she throws it in his face, it's a no. But if this is part of the middle of the road, since it's not coming in thin air, it's coming in context. The context is, up until now, there was no Kiddushin. Now you're giving me money, thank you, maybe it's a gift, maybe later on she'll have to give it back to him. That's a different question, what happens with the money mitzad chosh and mishpot. But mitzad the kiddushin says, Rav, that's not kiddushin. Rav proved this point from case two. Case two was a person who similarly gave a girl a deposit, a mashkoin. He told a friend, a pikodoin. He told her, this is my money. Please look after it. What did we say? If at the time of giving the money, right as he was giving her the money of the deposit, he changed his mind and he said, no, it's kiddushin. And then she accepted it. Mazel tov. And I want to stress again, in normal Kiddushin, such as by the time of Kiddushin, she's informed that this is Kiddushin, she doesn't say anything. Of course it's consent, you're right. Every normal chupa, the way it should be, unfortunately now they're changing it and it's very, very bad in some circles, the kala should be quiet under the chupa. The kala should just agree. She stands there with a white dress, accepting the ring. What does she think is happening here? She thinks this is a kol nidre, graduation party. Of course, she knows this is Kiddushin, and she agrees by silence. That's not a question. That's at the time of Kiddushin. Yeah, she's not mentally ill. She knows what's going on. Masha'en can, if, and that also true by the time, by the Pikodin, by the Pikodin. If he told her Pikodin, she put it in a drawer as Pikodin, his money, she sees herself as what? As a banker, as a keeper, as a safeguard person, Shomeret. And therefore, that's her mindset. All of a sudden, Five minutes later, it tells, ah, no, will you be Mikaddish to me with it? Why is she quiet? Uh, go, you just excuse my language. You're starting with me. I'm not. Who says I'm interested? We started this relationship as Picard, and I'm your banker, and that's where it's going to stay, unless you give her new money or something completely new. But as long as it's the same money that's stationary sitting in her drawer, and she sees herself as a banker, 
Her silence is not enough to prove that there's a real change of mind on her side. And therefore, that doesn't show consent. Silence is consent is true only in the right context. That's basically what Rova said. So there are two cases. One case is the length of the pruta, and that was Rova's chidush. The second, you can see it, case one, case two, yeah, b- below in the in the in the bold letters. I made Rava bold. And case two is the brisa that, according to Rava, proves the case. We're proving from the case of deposit to the case of the lesson shve pruta that afterwards there was shvei pruta hidden inside. Yeah. So now, no questions now because we have to just start the shear. Kashuba bepum nahara. Now we're going to try and disprove that point which Rava. Not to prove Rava's point, to prove Rava's proof. We're trying to divorce and disconnect between the Brisa, between the Picodon case, and the Kiddushin case of something that was less than Shreya the case of the bundled mat. Koshuba, they, made a, they, they had a question on what we just said, the Pumnahara, in a town called Pumnahara, the mouth of the river, Mishmei the Ravuna Breder of Yeshua. On behalf of Ravuna Breder of Yeshua, Ravuna, remember the name, that's important, Ravuna Breder of Yeshua basically is going to argue with Rova. And he claims as follows. Me, Dami, is it the same? It's not the same. Why? Also, in the Brysa's case, which you like to, to support yourself from that Brysa, at the beginning, he gave it to her as what? As a deposit. When he gave it to her as a deposit, you tell me, everybody, is she responsible? Yes. She accepted responsibility. Okay. Sovro, she thinks, Isha lehu, if I throw this money, umitavri, and let's say by mistake, not my fault, I throw it, and then later it's going to break. The money is, uh, let's say, very uh, fragile. We're talking about coins of like metal. Or, much better version in my eyes, it sol- solves me a lot of problems, umitabdi, they're going to get lost. If I throw it in his face, and you know, when you throw a lot of coins many times, one coin is going to go there, one there. They're going to get lost. I'm going to be responsible. And you'll say, lady, pay me back for the lost money. I'm just translating. Soon we're going to explain everything. That's why over there she did not throw it in his face because she was scared she'll be liable. But over here when it comes to Kiddushin, over here he didn't say she's responsible. If she says, I don't want your money, and I never actually... I was never interested in being Mikudeshes or guarding or anything. Nobody spoke about guarding. And if she throws it back in his face, what's going to happen? Nothing. The Iisa, the Loi Nicholo, if it's true that it's not good for her, that she's not comfortable and happy with the Kiddushin, Lishdinu, why doesn't she throw it in his face? Because if she throws it in his face and it gets lost, she's not Chayev. Why? She's not Mazik Be'adayim. She's not doing anything on purpose. She'll throw it back, saying, I never have had anything to do with your money. If one of them gets lost under the sand, it's not a responsibility. Let me explain everything. I just translated. Let me explain based on Rashi. The word of silence, as you guys asked yesterday yourself, is not so simple. Sometimes silence is consent. Sometimes silence is like, I so disagree with you. You're just talking complete nonsense. Get out of my sight. Yeah. These are shots of most where people keep silent, right? Now, says the Gemara, this is a, a point which we have to understand. Ideally, if a woman wants to really show a uh, lack of consent, disagreement, protest, women know how to protest. And what would she do? Throw it in his face. Yeah. Throw it back. Give it back to him. Right. That's a normal way of doing it. Why is she keeping quiet? Which is so ambiguous. Oh, so in the case of Picodoin, it's a Brysa. No more can argue on a Brysa. Because over there, she cannot use, listen to the, to the definition, she cannot really use the best way of protest because it's dangerous for her. Because she cannot throw back the money back at him because then she's still called a Shomeris. She's still called officially. She never finished her tenure of being a Shomeris. She accepted to be a Shomeris. So she's very careful. He's going to take me to court that I threw it in his face and one coin, he doesn't love her now. He hates her, you know that. Yeah, and now one of them fell under the sand, one of them fell under into the, excuse me, the bathroom. Yeah, oh, he'll be Mechaimi. So that's why my hands are tied. So what's the second best way to protest? By silence. Then we say, since there's no other way to protest, then silence is the best. And silence is what is really showing that she's not interested. And then Rava would have been right. But says Rav, but says Rav, here you're wrong, Rava. Why? But Kiddushin, it's not the same. 
Because by Kiddushin, why can't she throw it back in his face? She never accepted any Shmira. She didn't accept the Chlal to guard it, to keep it, to look after it. You're trying to be Mekadosh me with what? Something which is garbage. Then you make this stupid, uh, excuse the language, uh, surprise, and I open and you have money inside. If she's really not interested, why does she throw it back to him? Because she's now, you have to understand, as we said a few dapim ago, of course, if a woman throws something to the fire or into the ocean, which is she's liable, because then she did a Maisa Beyadan, she's a Mazi. But here, if she throws it back and not, it won't be her fault if it gets lost in the sand or in the toilet or something, then she's not Chayev. Yeah, you gave something to me without my will, Torcha Birashut's in my voice. You can't put stuff in my domain in a way that I really don't like and stuff all this nonsense. So if she throws that back to him without being a Shomeres, then she wouldn't be Chayev. Ah, if so, why did she choose to be quiet? She should she should have chosen the best protest of throwing back from the fact that she did not throw it back in his face. That shows that she's really, yes, interested in being Nikodesh, which means everything is relative. Sometimes silence means protest where you have no other way to protest. But if I could have protested better and I didn't, that shows that I'm interested. Why do you keep the money? If you're so unhappy with the money, why did you keep it? You have no reason to keep it. Buy the picodon. She keeps it. Until later on, she'll tell him, listen, mister, I don't be a Shomeris anymore. She can't just throw it uh, spontaneously. But in the case of a Kiddush, why didn't she throw it? The fact she didn't throw it, and in that context she was quiet, means she's interested. That's what Rav Huna believes. That's what Ruben read Rav Yeshua. There are many questions here. One question is, the Ritva asks, and many showing him, why is throwing back the only way? Why can't she calmly and nicely tell him, I'm not your Shomeris anymore? That will be the end of the Shmira. Then, yeah, she'll throw it back and she won't be chayev. Yeah, says the Ritva, there are many answers. <laughs> he says she hates him so much, he doesn't want to talk to him. She's very upset with this, you know, you know, women don't like when men, you know, go the wrong way. I thought it's a business thing. You're starting getting kiddush in here. She hates him or she's ashamed of him, one of the two. So she can only, she can only act without speaking, right? And therefore, only things she can do is either throw back or be quiet. Since she cannot throw it back because she'll be high with the so she decided to protest by silence. That's just the Ritva's idea, followed by some other Rishonim. But sir, that is what uh, Rav Huna Baradu Yeshua is challenging Rava. You can't compare the case of Kodoin, where she's responsible, to the case of Kiddushin, the first of case A, where she's not responsible, and therefore her silence, yeah, should have been agreement. That's what he thinks. Polich Rav Achoy. Rav Achoy now asks the question on Rav Huna Baradu Yeshua, supporting Rava. Atu kulu nashi din agmiri. You think all women are so are so uh, proficient, are so well-versed in dini. Now, what does dini mean? Not any halacha. Women are halacha. Ilcha Shabbos, Ilcha Snida. Because women are usually, back then for sure, even more than today, they were not so much in the business world. So you think every woman knows all these chashboinahs, that here I'm responsible, I'm not responsible. You think she's a, she learned chosh and mishpat in a michlelet uh, something, yeah? Achinami continues the question, here too. In the case of Kiddushin, he could have said the same Svara. Sovra, here you can also say about Kiddushin, that maybe she mistakenly thought, umit bedi, if I throw back the money also by Kiddushin, and they get lost, the coins, maybe in Kiddushin he can say the same thing. She doesn't know halacha, and she thinks, if I throw it back in his face, I would have thought that too. I wouldn't. I didn't know this halacha till now. I would have thought, if you throw someone else's money, which you are not interested, because you're not interested in the whole business. You throw it in his face and it gets lost. Maybe archive. Yeah, maybe she's wrong. And yet we see that we do see that it's protest. But yeah, therefore, it's the same thing. Both by, in her mind, it could be wrong, but in her mind, we can say that just like by the Kodoin, the only way, the only thing she can do is what is silence, right? And because she would not throw it back, but Kiddushin also, she would not throw it back. And her only choice is to keep silence. And that's her only protest. And she's not interested. And it's not consent. Just like Rova. So again, let's repeat. Let's review. Let's review. There are two ways to interpret the silence of a woman. Now, in Picodon, it's a brysa. Nobody can it in a brysa. It's a brysa. But when it comes to the case of the Amoiroim, the Amoiroim argued in which case? The case of a woman who originally got something for what? Lesson Shavu Pruta. Lesson Shavu Pruta. And she told him according to the Rosh. She said, it's not Shavu Pruta. According to the Rosh, she actually mouthed it. 
And according to others, she knew it. She's not so, you know, stupid. She can see the, yeah. You can see some rag. Ech, you think I'm a rag? You think I'm your doormat? <laughs> what what kind of kiddushin? So she was absolutely off. She's not interested. Then she opened. Wow, she's not wild. She's quiet. So that Rava says that means she stays in the same mode. She retains the same mindset of not interested, Mister. Yeah, bechule. I could she throw it? Couldn't she throw it? I don't know. But that's that's how Rava says it. Now Rav Huna says no. Ravuna says the fact, Ravuna Bredovashua says no, the fact that she could have thrown it, that would be the normal thing. She could have thrown it, or by the way, she could have said no. She could have said no, and she didn't say no. She kept quiet. I maintain, like you said yesterday, and she's interested. Or at least you can't prove it from the Brysa. Let's put it this way. You can't prove it from the Brysa. The Brysa was about Pikodon, not about regular case. That's a Machloikis. Now, Sholcho, what's the maskono? What's the conclusion? Sholcho Rav Acha Barav Lekameda Ravina. Rav Acha, the son of Rav, asked the question. He sent a letter to Ravina. Ki Agavna Mai. What would be? No, Halacha Lemaisa. Ki Agavna. We had such a case in our town, let's say, where I live. We have a question like that. What's the Halacha? A girl received a Noshav Pruta. Woo, inside all, inside the disgusting Chad Pami Kaf. She sits inside uh, $500. Boom. Surprise, and she kept it. Uh, uh, we don't know what's halacha. Sholachle, so he sent him back a big yisod in psikas halacha. He sent him back a letter. Anan loishmi alan hodor avun bredor brei de Rav Yoshua. We in in my town says Ravina. We never heard of it. He never said it to us, Ravuna bredor mm-hmm. Yoshua, and I never heard it from anybody else until you came and, and said it to me now. Meaning, I never heard about his chiluk. To say that she is Mekudeshes, meaning we always heard like Rova that she's not Mekudeshes. Since Cheder till today, says Ravina, all my life we knew the halacha like Rova. We never heard of the interesting for Ravina Brother Yeshua. And what did Rova say? It's a no. Rova says silence means disagreement because that's where she started. I she could have thrown, could have, should have. That's not the issue. Atun, the Shmia Lechu, what's Atun? You, plural, you people from your town, the Shmia Lechu. I can hear by your question that you heard about it. You knew about Rav Huna Svara to say that she is Mekudeshes, that she is interested. Chushu law. You have to be concerned about it. In other words, since you heard such a bar halacha that somebody sheds a doubt, there is in your books, in your realm, in your radar, you have an opinion like of who? Of Huna Brother Yeshua which is concerned and says, maybe the woman, now he didn't disprove Rav completely, but he said very possibly, in the case of silence, because she could have thrown it and she didn't, she kept quiet, I may interpret her silence as agreement. And she may be an Eshesish. Oh, Eshesish, ah. Since you heard it, Hushu Lo. Hushu Lo means you have to be concerned about it, at least, Gita. at least it has to be something of a Sophic Kiddushin or a big Sophic of Kiddushin, and in that case, if it happened in your town, you have to really require she gets a get from that husband who likes to give these surprise kiddushim. That's Adkan, case one and case two. Case three and four are different, by the way. Case three and four are connected a little bit, but it's a, di- it's a bit of a different story here. Questions are welcome now, actually, yes. Uh, it's uh, case number three. Now we're going to talk about a woman who wants to marry a thief. Whoa. Uh, it's a story time. There was a woman who stood and sold Varshechi. She stood in the market or somewhere. And what did she do? She was selling Varshechi. Everybody knows Varshechi. No, I'm joking. Varshechi may be pieces of silk. I'm sorry, pieces of silk or strings of silk. Or some people say like small hats. Let's say it's uh, pieces of silk. She sold, you know, pieces of silk. Also, Gavra came a man, you know, to her stand. Chotaf varshecha mino. He snatched one one varshecha, <coughs> one piece of string of, of silk from her. He snatched it from her without paying. Yeah. Omro lei, avanili. She told him, give it back to me. Omro lo, he told her, iya hivna lach, mikadesh li. If I give it back to you, it will be mikadesh to me. I want to be mikadesh you with a piece of string that I stole from you. Yeah, what a nice guy. What a beautiful start for a marriage. Shkalte, the ishtika. She took it and, and remained silent. How do you interpret her silence? 
everybody's going to say, I know you're going to say, after that event is over, she can say, in Shakli, yes, I took it, but I didn't take it because I agree and I love the guy, I want to marry him. But did it Shakli, I took what's mine. Just because he spoke nonsense and he said, will you marry me, doesn't mean that my taking it meant yes to the marriage. I just wanted to take what belongs to me. I, he's talking about marriage. Well, obviously, complete nonsense. I'm not interested. That's what she says. You're not so sure. Very good. Hmm? Not so simple. Okay. So now we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Basically, what does Rav Nachman say? Rav Nachman says when a girl got the, what, the, she, she got back. That's case C in the, yeah, in the chart. Yeah. Case C. Yeah. Kiddushin starters returning her stolen item. Yeah. So then what do we say? She can say afterwards, I wasn't interested. I just took it because it's mine. He spoke about Kiddushin. No. You, by the way, are talking about a different question. Who says the Bichlal can be Mikadashur? We're going to discuss it later. We're talking about her mind. In her mind, she can say, I, I retrieved what I deserved. What kind of Kiddushin? Ace Verov Rav Nachman. Rav challenges Rav Nachman with the following case from Daf Nun Beis. Kidsho begezel ube Hamas. Look, Hamas. Ube Gneva. A guy was Mikadash, a girl with Gezel. Gezel means he stole something. Hamas, you know, Hamas are, what do they do? Hamas, he gave money in force. In other words, force sale. Yeah, your motorcycle, I'm going to go to your house in Mishkafayim, give you an envelope of 14,000, yeah, shekels, 13, I think, already, and drive, and I'll find the keys. I'll drive without your consent. I'll drive out of your house with a motorcycle, and you'll scream at me, and I'll say, no, I'll give you the money. That's not allowed to do. That's called Hamas. Yeah, in English, it's called Hamas, Hamas. Ubegneva, yeah, Ubegneva, or with theft. You know the difference between Gezel and Gneva. Gezel means when he snatched it in public, Gneva means he stole it at night. So let's say a person, such a nice guy, he's a Makadish woman with a stolen good, stolen item, and she knows about it. Oi, or Shechotaf Sela Miodo, he stole from her. She's a victim. He stole a Sela, he stole a big coin from her hand, the Kidsha, and then with that very coin, he was Makadisher. Mikudeshes, by the way, I just want to clear the dust over here. If you look at the Gemara Daphne and Beis Omodalif, you'll see two things. First of all, the case of stealing from someone else, he cannot be Mikadashur because, my friend, a Ganav only becomes a, an owner once there's Yush. So if there was Yush, absolutely, at least Yush, if not Yush and Shinu Shem, Shinu Rashut, Shinu something, eh, Merube, Merube, right? So therefore, Kin and Gzel is not so simple. Therefore, says the Gemara, over there we talk about a case the Gezel and the Hamas and this are all cases of him stealing from her. He stole from her, and then he says, Haret Mekudeshesli, with the item I stole from you, which is Mekudeshes. Two questions. First, one second, one second, one second. First of all, question of the Gemara is, it's a stira. Hey, Rav Nachman, you're wrong. Rav Nachman, excuse me, you're wrong. You told me that if she receives back what he stole from her, she's not Mekudeshes. It says outright Bryce against you. My question is, is it his item to be Mekadosh her? So you're right about Kin and Gzela, but it's not enough. When he snatched it, is it his? No and yes. It's considered as partial Kin and Gzela. Why does he have to give it back to her? It belongs, a stolen item, once I did Meshicha, it belongs to me. However, there is still what is on it, the Chiyuv of the Heshev as Gzela Shagozal. I'm Chuyev to give it back to the first party, to the victim. In this case, in case that she does want, we assume that she's Michael. She wants to be miskadish with that item. She finds that Ghana a very cool guy. She wants to be miskadish to him. So we say in her mind, without saying anything, she was makne to him. She was Michael to him. She says, okay, your kidding Zayla should remain yours. I want you to have it in order to be miskadish me with that. Frekt the Rashba and Shuvas Rashba. I saw Shuvas Rashba last night. Shuvas Rash Bechelik Dala desks, there was no verbal uh, kno. She didn't say anything. Says a Rash Ba, it's Muchach Minei Ubei, as you're going to see soon the answer, it's Muchach Minei Ubei, a woman wants to get married. If a woman wants to get married so much, we assume that in those cases where we say she wants to be Miskadesh, she's Moichel him, and in her heart she says, I'm, sh I'm, I'm okay with you having it, keep it in order to be Miskadesh me, and that is okay, and that is fine. <laughs> That is fine. But the question still remains. Why is it that sometimes Rav Nachman says, she says, no, 
I'm not giving it to you. You stole it from me. Of course, I took it back from you. I'm not in Sun Kiddushin. And yet in the Brisa, we saw that, yes, that we assume in her mind she wants to give it to him in order that he should be Mekadoshar. What's the difference? When to apply A, when would you apply B? The answer will shed a lot of light on everything. It'll be so easy and so clear. And for the Gemara, in order to support Rav Nachman, one word, shidichim, shidichim, which means, in the case of the Brisa, you know a girl would agree to such a funny thing? What? He stole from her? And you're assuming 10 things over here, unverbal things? He stole. And then, We'll, we'll, I would give him a slap if I was, I don't know, a boy or a girl. I don't know what. Yeah, but he, he, he stole it from her. Says, be Mikadish to me. Of course she accepts it with no rotson. How do we say that she wants to be Mikadish to him? There was a shidduch before. He had prepared her. He told her, well, not to this event. They're in shidduchim. They had three, four dates already. They were mishtadich. She and him were prepared for the idea that at some point in the near future, he'll give her kiddushin. So therefore, when he snatched it from her, and then he says, it will be miskadish to me, of course she wants. That's a plan. I'm surprised they did it in a funny way. Like today, guys have very creative ideas. I don't want to propose to the girls. I personally hate it, but that's what the youngsters do today. I don't know if you know. They do all kinds of funny proposal marriages. Yeah, and with disgusting. Lamai said, that's the idea. The idea is that she was ready. She was prepared for Shiduchim. Her, her Kiddushin button is on, not off. So now when he gave it to her with all the funny ways, Mistama, we assume, as Rashbo says, in her mind, she wants the Kiddushin to go along. She was prepared for it. Therefore, in her mind, she says, okay, he should have my Varshechi. He should have my piece of silk. He gives it to me. Now it belongs to him. He gives it to me. Mazel Tov. Masha'enkin, if there were no prior Shiduchim, if he came to her in the middle of the market, he has no idea. She doesn't know him from Adam. She, don't, she doesn't know who he is. He came to her stranger, behaving violently, take it, give it back, of course then she's not Miss Kaddish, because who said she does? She can say, I took, but what I took was mine, and I never had any consent, and the fact I took it back silently, oh, that's a connection between case A and B and C, D. Here too she keeps quiet. Will it be Miss Kaddish to me? He gave it to her, and she accepted it. She didn't say yes or no. If it's time theft in the middle of the day, we assume it's a no. It's all the context. If he prepared her, I'm going to be Miss in the next few days, she said, oh, here came the moment, and then we assume in her heart when she kept quiet means she wants the kiddushin and it's really consent. Very good. Rashbo, Chuvas Rashbo Chelik Dale. Don't remember the Chuva I saw it last night and I saw it today too. Frek the Gemara says the Gemara. Now this is very nice Svara, very nice ideas. But how do you know it's right? In other words, Rav Nachman Umino Temra. How do you know? Give me a proof. Umino Temra the Shani Land Ben Shadich with the Loi Shadich. How do you know? It's a nice idea, nice Svara. Do you have a proof from a Brisa, from a Mishnah, that there's a difference in this context of keeping quiet in case of Shodich, Veloy Shodich, if there was, as you called it yesterday, preparation and no preparation for the marriage? It says yes. The Tanya, yes, we have a proof. The Tanya. That's case number four, by the way. In the chart, it's case number four, if you want to have a look quickly. That is the case of returning a debt. That's similar to case three. In case three, he's returning to her something that's hers, stolen item. In case four, he's returning to her a debt that he owes her. A girl lent money to a boy. Now the boy is giving her back her own money. Look what it look what happens next. Da -da -da -da. Omerlo, he told her, Can si Ah, before I continue, you should know here there is showing him go at great length, great length. The whole idea of the fact that the girl gave it to him. Why is the girl giving him the piece of, 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 of silk? Not because she likes him, because she wants him to be Mekadish or with a piece of silk, right? That's only. So the his ownership, you may view it as not 100% ownership. And we're trying to discuss here what happens. There's a case in the Chuvas Sarashba, that's why he talks about it. A woman, a married woman, gave a boy uh, her ring. And she said, you know, I know you will be Mekadish, your, your fiancé, your, your girl, your kala. And you don't have a ring, take my ring as a gift. And be Makadish your kala. There's a question if she can do it because really her ring belongs to her husband. The ring is hers, but the husband has a say on it, right? Yeah. So then there's a question there's real ownership. And then the Rashba goes on to talking about lending. It's a very complicated issue. What happens if you lend a ring to a chosan, right? So the chosan be the kala, 
I'll tell you one thing. There's so much information there and so many things. Don't do it. <laughs> that's for sure not ideal. And that's why in the real Yira Shamaim Halachik Chupas, the Esk the Choson, is the ring yours? Yeah, did you buy it with your own money? And the answer has to be yes. Even if the parents gave him the money, and I say Shiva Bocher, they gave him the money as Maton, and he, he, the ring has to be his. Yeah, I don't know all the details, but I think he also has to do Kenyan before, that we know it's 100% his. Because if it's a borrowed item, Maton Lachzir, you're getting into deep water, which is not, I'm not going to discuss it now, that, that's a different Indian. I, I'm just telling you, this is the place in Kedushin where it's discussed in the Rishonim. The, the, the Tabas has to be completely his. And we assume here the girl gave him the piece of, of, silk, of the silk completely his, knowing he'll be Mekadishar with it. The Tanya. Omerlo, the man said to the woman, Kan si selazu, take back this coin. Shani chayv lechi, I owed you money. I owe you money. Right? Remember you lent me the sela, you know, a, a month ago to pay for my uh, tuition for something? Here, I'm giving it back to you. Okay, very nice. She accepted it. The chaz of Omerlo, and then all of a sudden it changed. But he told her, "Is actually, boy, actually, I want you to marry me with, with your money. <laughs> with your money. Yeah. So then what happens? This case one, case two. Bish'as matan mo'ois. Let's say he said it to her as he gave it to her. Similar to the first case, if you remember, yeah? In other words, he's giving her back the, the sela, but as he's handing it to her, the last second, he says, no, I actually want to switch it that it should be Kiddushin from me to you. Which means, obviously, if she says yes, she wants she has to make a mental change and be makne to him, the Salah, and then with that Salah now belonging to him, he'll be Makadushar. Does it work? Well, if it's done early enough, before she received it, then depends. Rotsto Mekudeshes. If she wants, she's Mekudeshes. Loy Rotsto Ena Mekudeshes. Soon we're going to see what that means. If she wanted, she's Mekudeshes. If she does want, she's not Mekudesh. Don't ask me what's the Chiddush. It's going to be a big Chiddush soon. But these are the words. Let's say the money was in her wallet, in her pocket, belonging to her. Absolutely 100% money that she received back from the borrower, the man. And then, good morning, the day after the man woke up and said, what? Be Mekadesh to me with that money. I feel what to any Mekadesh. Wow. Even if she says, yes, yes, I do. Oh, what a nice idea. Of course, I'll be a wife. She's not Mekodesh. It's called in Hebrew, too late. That's the end of the Brisa. The Gemara is going to now analyze and break down the Brisa. My rotsto or my lo Please give me a dictionary definition to the terms wanted or didn't want. Similar to what we said before. Ile my rotsto do omro in, loi rotsto do omro loi. If wanting means she said yes, and not wanting means she said no, ha ishtika ha bekidushin. And if she didn't say anything, usually, as you all said yesterday, when a woman says nothing, in a classical case, it's kidushin. Yeah? If so, wait a second. So what does the ratio really tell me? No chidush at all, Svi. No chidush. You said you asked the test in a different way. No chidush. Venitni mekudesh at stam ki hosom. Why does the bride have to tell me if she said no, it's a no. If she said yes, it's a yes. And if she kept quiet, it's a yes. Every child knows that, says Rashi. Just don't, why do you write if yes, yes, no, no? Just write, Mekudesh is normal. Everybody knows that Kiddushin work, yes means yes. No means no. And quiet in the regular Kiddushin means yes. So what do you have to start driving my cup, draining my cup and driving me crazy? Yes, yes, no, no. The, the, the bride should have spoken in the same simple way in the previous bride and should have said, stop. Nikudashis, with the regular standards of Kiddushin, Ella, must be there's a red herring here. Must be your explanation, Rotsta Lorotsta is wrong. Must be, what does it mean? Rotsta de Omro in, okay. Rotsta means she said yes. Loy Rotsta de Ishtiko. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Which means, not wanting means she kept quiet. Oh, which means what? That if she kept the Katani de Ena Mikudashis, hold it a second. Now we have to revisit the whole Brisa. The whole Brisa. This is strange. Again, what did we say? A guy gave a girl Picodoin money. Not Picodoin, sorry. Return of a debt. Returning money belongs to her as a debt. If at the time of giving, he said, hey, I actually want it to be Mekudeshes. Then we said, if she said yes, it's a yes. And if she didn't want, meaning if she kept silent, then it's a no. Ah. 
at the time of, even before she received it, he's telling her the money that's yours, I want to convert it into my money that I'm a Kaddish you. And she was stone-faced at the beginning of the process. Ain't a Mekudeshes. She's not married. Continues the Gemara. I want to say more about later, but first we have to continue. It's my time. Why? In Shakli, Vadidi Shakli. Yes, I took, and I took mine. He's talking about Kiddushin. The guy needs psychological help. Who's talking about Kiddushin? I took what's mine. The same Svaro of Rav Nachman before. He's telling me that he wants me to give him my money and then give back. Excuse me, mister. Give me back the money you owe me. And that's our interpreter silence. Because, by the way, as opposed to cases A and B, in this case, it's her money. Not his money that's misinterpreted. It's her money. When he's telling me with my money, unless I clearly say yes, Y E yes, N, yes, I do, like the goyim, right? They say under the chupa, yes, I do. Yeah, unless she says yes, I do, yeah, with stars in her eyes, if she doesn't say clearly yes, I do, we assume her silence means sorry, it's mine, just give it back to me. That's why I'm not protesting, because talking nonsense, I'm taking what belongs to me. Now, what happens in a later stage, we're going to discuss later. First, let's Finish three more lines. The Ela Kashia Ach the Kitcha Begezel of Bahomus of Begneva, Oishot of Selim Yod of Kitcha Mekudeshes. I, excuse me, how can you say that in the Brisa that we assume that whatever is hers, she is just retaining and taking what, what I said, what she deserves? Yeah, in KC, you see, not like that. You see that if he stole from her, not giving it back to her, she is Mekudeshes when she's quiet. So you see that when she's quiet upon receiving the Kiddushin, even though it's her money, we assume she quickly, the wheels in her mind are turning very quickly. She says, okay, I'll give him the Varshachi, I'll give him the item, so it's Makadish me. But in the case of Tikodon, we don't say that. Of, of a lo loan return, we don't say that. What's the difference? El alavsh mami, no, here you see I was right. A good solution to explain the difference between the prices. And discern between the prices is what? Very clearly. In the case where she, we assume it's a yes, when is it? Let's summarize the whole thing. When do we assume that when a guy's playing games, he has her money, which he gives back, either stolen or loan return, if she doesn't say anything to his funny ideas? Well, if there was shiduchim before, she's expecting a great moment. He proposed, proposed, he already proposed to her. She knows that at some point he's going to be Mekadish her. And therefore, when he snatched it, and now he says, will you marry me? Of course she said, even without saying yes, I almost fell into the trap. Even without saying yes, just being quiet means yes, because she's prepared for that mentally. But Enkin, in the case of when there was no preparation, she's not expecting any marriage from him. She doesn't know him. Maybe she knows him, but she never thought, he thought, thinks about her that way, and therefore what? There's no preparation. Then he steals and he takes, or he gives back a loan, and she's quiet. Silence means, sorry, mister, I'm Kiddushin. Who's talking about Kiddushin? And that's the answer. Now, why am I so excited? And I keep telling you there's something I still have to share with you. If you follow the Brysa well, the fourth Brysa, we said that in the case of when she already had the deposit in her hand for some time, and then he says he's got chili boy, then he's not deposit, not deposit, excuse me. He had the loan return. She got, she lent him 100 shekels a month ago. Now he gave her back 100 shekels. Good, thank you very much. We're just um, friends, yeah? And now, two days later, three days later, he comes and tells her, that 100 shekel I want to use as your kiddushin. In that case, the Bryce says that even if she says, yes, 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 yeah, yes, smileys, hearts, yes, no, it's not going to help. Why? She said, yes. Says Rashi, because it's her money all the time. What? She, Rabbi Shloyme, took it, a note, a note, a note to the Rebetzin. He didn't give her anything new. Not only did he, he didn't give, give her anything at all. If it's a time when he's giving her the money, she can quickly, before she can quickly sort of jump off the train before it, before, it, before it gets to the destination, before the money came to her hands, she can make mental change and say, ah, as he's giving it to me, I'm deciding it's going to be his money, oh, and now he's giving it to me. Once the money's in her drawer belonging to her, what do you make her with? It belongs to her billion percent. It's either always with her. 
And therefore, you can't be, you're not doing anything new to start the process of Kiddushin. So even if she says yes, 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 there's nothing that really happened, and therefore she's not Mekodesh. Very good. That's the end of the four cases. Baruch Hashem. First, Wadlan. Yes, I'm listening to questions and comments. Zaitel, first wide line. Ki nach nafshe de Rav Asi. When Rav Asi was nifter, after the demise of Rav Asi, Ailu Rabbonon, the other, all the other Rabbonon came together, they made a meeting, a gathering, len kutinu l'shmaitse, in order to gather together, lin kot, to take, to hold together all the different shmuos, all the different Torah, and Diver Torah that Rav Asi said. In other words, they didn't want to lose Rav Asi's legacy, so to speak. Not Tom, his legacy uh, picture on the wall. They didn't want to lose the Torah that he had. Yeah, so they said, let's organize it. And everything Rav Asi said, let's say to each other, let's say there's something you, Rashi says, Chadoshim. Any recent Torah from Rav Asi may have not yet been publicized yet to everybody. Let's all say to each other together so we get Rav Asi's message clear after his petira, and remember it for generations to come. Omer Lumi Rabbonon, at the meeting, one of the Rabbonon got up, the Rabbi Yaakov Shmei, and he said this as follows, Just like we saw in the first Mishnah, that a woman is not acquired in less than Shveh Pruta, so too a piece of land cannot be acquired with less than Shveh Pruta. Interesting. Just like a woman is not acquired unless it's Shreya Pruta, so too, similar to that, a land is not Nikna Pachat Mishra Pruta. And we're going to quickly look at Tosafos. Says Tosafos, asks the question, the top Tosafos in the page. Keshem Shen Isha Niknes Pachat Mishra Pruta Kach and Akaka Niknes. Tema, Prek Tosafos, you have the order the wrong way around, right? If you want to say that somebody is as smart as, wow, is as smart as the Vilna Goyen. Right? Let's have Vilna Gon really had the same uh, level of Gon. You, know, you know, that guy, Shmuel Chaim Pachachovsky, is as smart, there's not such a guy, by the way, <laughs> that I know. Shmuel Chaim Pachachovsky, the third, is as smart as the Vilna Gon. You're not going to say, you know how smart the Vilna Gon was? It was as smart as Chaim Shlomo Pachachovsky. <laughs> That's not the way you talk, right? True? Prek Toisves, Tema, Davil has made a Kipcha. The Gemara should have said the other way around. That Kinyone Isha, Loyadin, and Elam Isode. How do you know that a woman is acquired with money? From a field, last week's parsha, the soda of Ephron Ha Hiti. So you, you get it the wrong way around, yeah. A woman, yeah, just like a woman, so to a field, the other way around. Shema Shloimer he says, answers Taisvus. The last lekzur shavu the kicha kicha el anafkele mi v'yot sochinam. We don't learn it from. You remember those machlokes. We don't learn the woman is nikn the bekesef from kicha kicha is the Ephron, but from v'yot sochinam, v'yot sochinam and kesef. Remember v'yot and kesef laodon ze. Yeah, who's that? The father. Yeah, there's no kesef given to the master of the girl who's going free. There is money given to the tate of the girl who's getting married, and so too to herself. So that's why, and Khanami, field is not a source for a woman, equal rights. Women are not learned from a field, they learn from another woman. Inami, Yeshlomar, the Urche de Gmar, Lemin Kataposhut Tchila. I'm not reading the rest of Toys first. In other words, the way of the Gemara is to tell us what we know. In other words, that, that makes a lot of sense. It's true that in the Lomdas, we learn a woman from a field, let's say, even if we say that way, and not the other way around. But the Maisa, what we know right now on the plate, on the table, as Kiddushin students, what do we know? A woman. It's a Mephorosh Mishnah. The Mishnah says Mephorosh that a woman is naked in the Pruta. It doesn't say that about a field in any Mishnah, as far as I know. Oh, Mimela, the Gemara tells you, you, the regular run of the meal, Daf Yomi, Omud Yomi guy, you know in the mission about a woman, you should know the same thing applies to a field. Now, now you should know a field is nicknamed the one pruta. Excuse me. How can you buy? I think, I'm not sure. I think an apartment in Yerushalayim is worth more than a pruta, no? Right? A nice apartment in a good Haredi neighborhood in the middle, very cheap. Three million shekels is a very nice price. You get three million, you hit the jackpot. Yes. Yeah. What? <laughs> Why not? Three. Three million shekel is very nice, cheap price. Bnei Brak, very cheap. Yeah, the state of three million shekels. Yeah. So, well, how does one pruta get you the field? Says the Sma, Sefer Mirasei It's the first installment. It's not symbolic payment. He says no. It's the first installment. It's three million shekels. One pruta is given, and then three million shekels minus pruta will come in installments later. 
But the first installment, even though it's only Shove Pruta, you have one foot through the door and you actually have two feet through the door. You owe money, Seder. You owe a lot of money, 99.9 .9 of the money. But the first installment has to be paid. And this is how we view it. And says the Sma, how do we know that? From the field of Ephron. How do you know you buy a field with money? From Sod Ephron, Avram Avinu and Ephron. There, the money wasn't symbolic. It was a hefty, nice 400 shekel, which is more like, you know, millions today. Oh, Mimela, that shows me that to be a real payment. Elamai, it's yours after the first payment. Now, Omar Ule, they asked him a question. Vatani, it says in the Brisa, Afalpi, she'en isha niknes b'pochot mishve pruta. A Brisa says, just the other way around. Even though a woman, that's for sure, cannot be acquired in less than a pruta, that we know, she has to get at least a pruta, Wow, he says in the price of black and white against you that a karka may be bought with less than shveh pruta. <coughs> Omar lay so that he answered Rabbi Yaakov, who's now representing the dead Ravasi, the Niftar, Kitanya Hibichalipin. No, 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 no. We're not talking about money less than shveh pruta, we're talking about Khalipin. What's Khalipin? The Tanya, I'm going to read and then I'm going to explain. One is allowed to buy the. You tell me, people, how many kinyonim are there in a field? We're going to discuss it soon. One of the four kinyonim, four ways to buy a field, is chlipin. Chlipin, it means what? You give a symbolic kli. It has to be a kli. Maybe fruit, it's a question. Yeah. You have to get an intact full kli, a vessel, utensil, item, object. Yeah. You give it to the other person, he may even give it back to you. The symbolic idea of handing over something to the field owner shows that it's a point of no return, and we're 100% serious about it, and it's a done deal. But it doesn't have to be Shove Pruta. Can a woman be nicknamed with Khalipin, guys? Why not? Show a note, a note to the rabbits and all the Very good. She's so quick. Wow, 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 wow. In other words, she, huh? A, a chalipin, a woman cannot be nicknamed with chalipin because chalipin can be done with a avosubonim Chinese toy. You know, avosubonim actually have nice toys. In avosubonim, they give the nice ones. But in other places, you know, they give very tiny Chinese toys. They don't last, you know, half an hour. They're less than shava pruta. If can you be makadesh woman for a Chinese toy, it's insulting. And therefore, she's not miskadeshes. What about Khalipin of a gold watch, of a, I don't know, diamond watch, 100,000 shekels? Still it doesn't work. Why? Because this kind of Kenyan works with lots and Shava Pruta. Even if you gave Shava Pruta, it's not worth anything. He's not giving her money. You're giving her an item in a symbolic way, like switching, swapping. Ah, and that's what it says here. And that's good. Why? Again, in the case of what? In the case of Kesef, it's exactly the same. And Rav Atsi was right. Women and field regarding Kenyan is the same. It's not insulting at all. You compare a woman to a, to an apartment, whoo, apartments are worth a lot and people put their kishkas in whole life and they fight and they die for apartments. Yeah, don't worry, right? A woman is like an apartment, very good. It has to be Shove Pruta. When it comes to Khalipin, it's different. And that's what the Bryce has spoke about. And don't mix the two. Khalipin is an item which is less than Shove Pruta sometimes. And the field may be bought for that. What was the first field in history which was nicknamed with Khalipin? And what was the Khalipin item? By Baz. Have you ever heard of the book of Ruth? Ruth? You have to say Ruth, not Ruth. Not to show them. Yeah, in the book of Ruth, it says that Boaz bought the field for a shoe. Right? So a shoe, who a shoe, shoe. That's such a big thing. Why? Because the field was worth more than a shoe, I'd like. But symbolic idea. I'm giving a shoe and giving me the field. Yeah. That by women doesn't work very good. Writer, continue. Hadar Yasvi Kaamri. Now they sat down again after the death of Rav Asi and they said the following A person is not very proficient and not big Talmud Chochom in the area of Gitin and Kiddushin, which means he should not paskin, should not give Psak Halocha. Unless he's 100 million percent sure that he has vast knowledge of all of Gitin and Kiddushin. He cannot be a Dayan in Beis Din. Mesader Kiddushin is Machloikis. Samri Shonim said that Mesader Kiddushin it could be because it's not that complicated. That's a Shaila. But to really pass in Shailas of Kiddushin and Gitin, 
you're dealing here with nuclear bombs, you're dealing here with brain surgery, you can't deal with that unless you're super duper mumcha, more than Dina Momenus, and we explained why, and we're going to explain why now. Why is it that Gitin Vikidushin is the area in Halacha, which is the most, so to speak, sensitive, and only the top of the cream of the crop, the Yonim, should deal with that? Omer Shmuel, Omer Basi, Omer B'yoychanon, B'kashin lo'oylom yoysel midor amabul. In other words, if you deal with Gitin and Kiddushin and you're not 100% sure what you're talking about, the results will be so hazardous, so catastrophic, more than the Mabul. Shenema, it says in the book of Hoshea, Alo Vakachash, the Novi Hoshea is basically rebuking his generation, like many Nevi'im did, on all kinds of different Averis they did, and soon we'll see which one is the worst one. Alo Vakachash means what's Allah? Shvua. They swear for kachash. They swear falsely. The ratzoyach, they kill. The ganoiv, they steal. Nice guys. The noiv, oh, horotzu. And the breach, pritzis, noaf. What's noaf? They're adultery. Exactly, exactly adultery. The domim, the domim, the go. And the blood touches the other blood. So now, and that shows you that the worst avera is the avera of what? Soon we're going to see why. The worst avera of all was new. How do you know? How do you know that the worst one is new? It says all kinds of averis there. Yeah, why are you telling me? Because what's going to happen here in case of getting the Gidushin wrong way around? A woman who's married to Reuven legally, the Dayan foolishly thought that the get Reuven gave her is a good get. It's not a good get. She marries Shimon. She thinks she's okay. And now Shimon and her, the entire life, from people are living with an HSC Shimon, yeah? And he produces with her better from people. They have 15 mamzerim, not just one. Thank you. Great. So you created a point of no return kind of situation. That's all very nice, but how do you know that the potsuk tells you that that's the worst aver of all? My mashma. How do you know that the worst one, and not only that, you're saying it's worse than the mabul. Dora mabul, the worst of the worst. And you're telling me that people who even mistakenly have relations with the ish, the worst than Dora mabul, and that's the worst aver of their generation, of Hoshea and all generations? How do you know? The metagem of Yosef, yeah, of Yosef was a blind person. Therefore, of Yosef says the ritva was a big mumche on targum. Why? Of Yosef couldn't read the chumash. He couldn't read the sefer Torah. Now you're not allowed to say divrei Torah from chumash balpe. Of Yosef could only do balpe because he couldn't read inside. So therefore, that made of Yosef very proficient in targum because targum you're allowed to say balpe. That's the idea. So of Yosef was very very good in Torah balpe, relatively more than Torah bechtam. So Rav Yosef was the master on all the Targumim, like Rav Yosef ben Uziel, and he quotes the Pesach of Rav Yosef ben Uziel, Moldin Bonin, they're having children, the father, children, min Neshech of Reun, oh, and they do that from the wives of their friends, yeah, even unwillingly. Choyvin al Choyvin Moisifin, and they domim, but domim the goal means they create a virus over a virus. I think it means what? Eshesish is terrible enough, and on top of that, Mamzer. And now the mamzer, people don't know is a mamzer. Yeah, she's a very from woman, the ki'ilu divorcee. And they'll marry the mamzerim that destroys all Klal Israel. Yeah, because of that one, one low-class dayan who is, you know, aspiring more than he thinks he can do more than he can. Uksiv. And it says in the next posuk, we still didn't answer, how do you know that's the worst of era? You know I know it's the worst one? al can because of this, which is this, which was the last Avera mentioned in the previous posuk? Niuf. Domi medomi means niuf still. That's a chidush, yeah? Niuf. Because of that, to ovel ha'oretz, the land will be, to ovel the avelis will be mourning, the umlal kol yoshev bo, everybody in the land will be miserable, b'chai sasodib b'ofe shamaim, the gam d'gia hayom yosofu, all the nature, all of nature, even the animals and the birds, and even the fish, all of them suffer because of the princes of the world, even the fish. How do you know it's worse than Dora Mabul? Dora Mabul, dogim shebayam. Ah, but the Mabul, as bad as it was, it was definitely a world catastrophe, universal, Shen Kamayu. One kind of creature was saved that was the fish, the dogim. Shenemar, Mikol Asher Becharovo Mesu. All the creatures in the Charovo, in the dry area, died. Veloy dogim shebayam. But the fish in the sea, they were saved. Here, even the dogim shebayam, even they are going to die or somehow suffer 
because of the princes of the in the world that's rampant in the world, either willingly or even unwillingly, because of the Yonim who do it the wrong way around. Now, all the Rishonim ask the following. What we're trying to say here is that from some reason, yeah, when people have relations with the nation, it creates a situation worse than the Mabul. All Rishonim learn, I didn't understand it that way, but I'm obviously machnia to all the Rishonim, the Ritva, many others, they all say, Mashma, that in times of the Mabul, as bad as they were, they didn't have the Aver of an Ish. It says they had, excuse the language of sexuality, they had all the dead, everything else, but they didn't have Ish. Ish. That is a big question, because Rashi and the Chumash says that there were Ish. Ish. And it says, Mikol Ashar Bechor, at the end of Parshat Bereshit, Ish, before Noach, when it describes the situation, it, yes, you look at more in Rashi, the Chumash and Rashi, they chose even married women. So how do you reconcile that? Says the Ritva, there were Ashes Ish Averis before the Mabul. There were. But there are two answers. Answer number one, and Chinami. The Averis before the Mabul and the Averis in time of, of being promiscuous are the same. But we are much worse than Dora Mabul because they were the first ones and they were punished. We should learn from their mistakes. That's where it's worse. It doesn't mean that there was no Ashes Ish then. There was Ashes Ish before the Mabul and the post diluvian, post the Mabul. At the end of the day, post the Mabul, you should learn your lesson, excuse me. In that way, you're worse. Or another pshat that I saw in the Rishonim, remember already who says what? Mamzerim. We are concerned here of the double trouble, Eshes Ish and Mamzer. Before the Mabul, they were going. And let me tell you something, which may, may not surprise you. Unfortunately, many Goim have Eshes uh, Ish relations, but the kids are not Mamzerim. I... John Smith and Tim McKenzie know that the sons are mamzerim, but lemaisa halachically there's no mamzeris by guy. It doesn't make a difference, la loko. Doesn't make a difference. Doesn't. By us we know a regular. You're looking for a good shidduch for your grandson, your granddaughter, your son, your daughter. Make sure it's a kosher family, right? Because a mamzer, a yid mamzer cannot marry a regular Jewish person. Maybe a ger, another mamzer, shifchum shuchels, but shenken by guy. There's no difference. There's no prohibition on Tim McKenzie to marry. Uh, Belinda Smith, even though she's a Mamzeris, there's no such thing. Therefore, it was very bad. <laughs> I know enough Kamina. Oishea and us, we're talking to Jewish people. And we're saying, excuse me, look what you're doing. You're creating halachic Mamzerim that's much worse. And therefore, may we be seeing Mashiach soon. I want to say thank you to all of you. We're actually very much in the middle, but it's late already. And I didn't prepare the next lines either. Um, um, um. And also to say thank you to everybody here. Thank you for your participation. Thank you to everybody on Torah anytime. The beautiful platform to give us. Thank you. And to people on YouTube. Atzlocho, Brocho, only Simcha, and the opposite of Mabu. Thank you.